Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab and today we're taking a look at not a new product but an updated product that we actually never reviewed, at least not on video, so we've got a lot of ground to cover. It's the WD Black P50 Gaming SSD, but it's not actually this one. There's one over there. Yeah, we have it plugged in. The cables are really short and um, the drives look identical, so... They look identical. The difference is when we flip it over... If you stare at it really, really closely, it says four terabyte instead of one terabyte. This one says one terabyte. We've got one plugged into the test system that's the four terabyte. That's the new version. We've got these other IDs here. Um, basically what they did is they went through the whole portfolio that had capped out at two terabytes before and put a new um, uh, high capacity four terabyte WD black inside. So now all these two terabyte drives are available in four terabyte capacities which is pretty good. The uh, Creative Pros on the SanDisk, you're more design oriented on the WD, and of course your gamers for the P50 Black. Now this guy has a um, an interface that's a little bit different and it's caused a lot of confusion in the USB space. This uses which one? It's USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 and the main difference is it's backwards compatible across all the USB standards but it gives you up to two gigabytes of uh, performance, which right. the only way to get that uh, get uh, over one gigabyte before would be uh, going to Thunderbolt 3, and not everything supports Thunderbolt 3. So you have this kind of divergent um, path that these drive vendors have gone to, so they can support tablets, they can support PlayStation, Xbox, PCs, whatever, and they have a standard that will work. It might be slower on some devices, but it'll work versus Thunderbolt 3, they just won't do anything at all on the right. wrong and that, device. Right, and that's the trick. It's the universal compatibility in this interface that makes it interesting because as Kevin says, it can work with a ton of different devices, maybe not always at full speed. And that's why we actually didn't do a video review of the first drive of this one terabyte capacity because we didn't yet have a compatible card. We now have an Oracle add-in card that gives us that two lanes uh, of performance and lets us get those higher performance numbers. And actually, let's take a quick look at the uh, at the overall specs here. And like we said, four terabyte, uh, 3.2, the by two is not on that, but it definitely is. Universal compatibility, the dimensions, this P50 is actually the same size, even with the double-sided drive. Yes, yeah, so although some of the thinner models, we've heard that uh, they'll this, be a little bit thicker. The WD guy probably has to go a little bit thicker. Yeah, but the but other ones, there might be enough room. Uh, so you get your cables, quick install guide, all the basic stuff. Which it probably is, also supports the Xbox Series X, even though it's not on. Just didn't make it on the spec yeah. sheet. So it will because there are the ports. And uh, But in that case, you're not going to get 2 gig a second. You'll just get... No, and knowing the one. Xbox Series X and its fun, uh, you're probably not going to be able to put the new Xbox Series X games on it. You can use it for You can massive. put them there, you just can't run them from there. Correct. It's That's a whole different video. You can move them. Yeah, well, but even so, I mean, when we're talking about uh, the capacity of these drives, a four terabyte drive, games are getting bigger, you can fit a bunch of stuff on there. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the capacity, the interface, the, the uh, performance. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at some of that performance. So Kevin's going to pull up um, Black Magic on Windows, and what are we testing on? What's our platform? So this is our uh, Lenovo uh, P520, and again, it has an Oracle add-in card for the um, that USB 3.2 Gen 2 right. by 2 speed. Right. Um, and we're running our uh, Black Magic test on. And this is just doing a uh, single-threaded uh, sequential read and write uh, onto uh, the drive, and again, we're getting in the range of um, like 1.6, 1.7 read and around the same on write. Right, and so what you're seeing here and the reason we're not hitting the two, uh, two gig numbers overhead, a little bit of inefficiency and not a heavy, heavy workload. Yeah, you're going to see higher loads as you go up into multi-threaded uh, areas. But for anyone that likes this design ID over the SanDisk um, or you know, the HGST also from WD in this family, uh, from a Creative Pro standpoint, you get all the check boxes, at least from the Black Magic test. Yeah, everything works, and it works really fast. So one of the other things that you did this morning that we took a look at is the thermal camera. And some of these things, we worry about their ability to shed heat, because if you can't shed heat, then you lose performance. 
You yeah, ran so, this thing for like an hour and a half, right? So that's where a lot of these drives will start to kind of separate in the field. You'll have some drives that are entirely plastic cases. They'll be really lightweight. But there's, um, if you're just running burst workloads, you might not realize it, but if you're running sustained workloads, there's no way for the heat to go from the drive inside out into the world. Right. So these guys, um, a lot of the case designs are metal on the inside, and then it, it's able to disperse heat over the um, one of the covers acting as a heat sink. So on the WD, the uh, top cover is a, a nice piece of... I think it's billet aluminum, but uh, it's a nice broad heat sink that allows it to dis uh, disperse heat. And it does it in a very even fashion, so when you're running a heavy scratch space onto it or something like that, it stays nice and reliable during that. Yeah, to Kevin's point, most people work with these drives in a burst mode, but if you're going to game off of it, it's going to see a little more activity and it's definitely going to warm up. So we'll drop that video in that shows the drive uh, with our thermal camera. It's a little bit lower resolution, but it, it's kind of a neat visualization of this drive hitting about 115 degrees while we pounded it for an hour and a half, two hours of steady workloads. The other thing we want to show, we've shown the single threaded on Blackmagic, but what we really want to show is how this thing can cap the interface. And so what we're going to do is take a brief break, reconfigure the drive, and then load up Iometer to show you this thing hitting two gig a second. Yeah. All right. All right, so we've reconfigured the drive for Iometer. What's the difference in terms of Blackmagic versus Iometer and interacting with these drives? Uh, both, there's numerous ways to skin a cat, and uh, with workload generators, there's uh, Blackmagic can be fixed to one particular workload that stresses the drive in a sequential read-write workload. Iometer, you can really run whatever you want to run on. So we use it to kind of push boundaries or just kind of figure out where things operate. Uh, in different testing scenarios, and it gives us a little bit more flexibility. I'm nodding my head, but I'm not really listening because I was thinking about skinning cats. Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and fire up Biometer now. And uh, we've got that old run there, but let's kick a new one off. And what workload are we running here? So the first is going to be our um, uh, sequential write test. In this area we're seeing around uh, a little bit of, right, right around uh, two gig a second uh, right. Okay. And um, this is with uh, four thread workload and overall it's going to be more of a what your top line sequential number is going to be and there might be areas where you can get a little, little bit lower latency depending on the thread count but in this area we're just forcing it to get uh, pretty high. Now this will be its best case scenario when you were running this thing for the extended test which we don't worry so much about in our reviews but you were at what, 15, 1600 megabytes per second after yeah, an hour and a half? It's going to taper down, but that's uh, pretty common. You're going to find a lot of drives uh, go to around one gig a second upward to uh, 1.5. And some uh, will be a little more sporadic underneath that, but uh, they'll fall down from where their burst numbers are. Well, that's really where the quality of the drive comes in, the build of the design, the enclosure, all those sorts of things can yeah. help get you that performance longer. Yeah, you have to be able to supply the drive with enough power, but also be able to shed heat uh, if you want the stronger performance. Okay. Is there anything else you want to run here on Iometer? So now it's running over onto the read side, and again, it's oh, basically... Oh, good timing. Yeah, it's maxing it out, uh, which is to be expected. And uh, It's to be expected, but we don't always see this. No. Uh, read speed, it's, uh, you're going to be more common to uh, keep it uh, close to where... Uh, the drive will top out, but write speed is one where some drives will keep it for a fraction of a second. Others might uh, stay sustained in that range for a few minutes. Others will taper off and just kind of get crushed really, really quickly. Well, and if you're going to be gaming off of this thing and interacting with the drive a lot, then the quality of the drive probably means a little more to you. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay, so we're glad to have done this review now, the video review anyway, that we've got the equipment that's a little bit better suited for these by two drives. And even though this is the one, you know, the four terabytes over there still testing away with the thermal camera on it, uh, for those that want the capacity or need it for their games or whatever else they're going to do, Creative Pros could sneak into this drive and still be pretty happy. Uh, the big capacity is nice. It's more expensive, of course, but you know that this goes down to, I think, 500 gig in this in this uh, design. So. Yeah, they offer a lot of options for it. Yeah, so overall, good drive, really great performance profile, good sustained performance profile, and really nice thermals. So if you want to hit it for gaming, the P50 is a great choice. Thanks for tuning into the review.